Hi, welcome to the next training session of SAP FICO module. Today's topic of training is Dunning. Dunning, which is a part of accounts receivable. In this, we will be covering an overview on Dunning, what Dunning means, how Dunning is used in SAP, regarding what, and what are the configuration steps so as to use and uh, the Dunning process and the unit testing. Dunning in normal terms means to remind or to give notice of due date, due payments. Sometimes the customer may not pay on time. In this case, you can send a payment reminder or a Dunning notice to remind them of their outstanding debts. It is a regular activity to serve the notice to the customer for their overdue amounts. Dunning is the functionality in SAP to serve the notice to the customer, even it can be done for vendors as well, for the amount which are overdue for payment. It is typically consist a letter. The notice that the Dunning notice basically is typically consist of a letter that summarizes the invoices that are due for payment and politely request the payment to be made to the customer. When you customize Dunning, you have to create the Dunning procedure. After that, you have to make settings for the Dunning procedure. In that, you have to define the number of due dates the number of Dunning levels, that means how many notices you want to serve to that customer, are to be configured in the system. There are a maximum nine level that can be done in the SAP system. So when the customer misses the payment for the outgoing invoice within a specified payment due dates, the Dunning letter is generated via SAP program and sent at customer addresses or even it can be sent automatically to their email IDs as well for reminding the customer outstanding payment. Requirement, the Dunning system enables to trust the liable customers who have not paid their open invoices within a given time sp spam it enables you to handle the process like for sending a reminder to the customer through to referring such as customer to collections agencies as well. In this Dunning topic, the Dunning system covers the following documents. There should be some open customer invoices so that the Dunning can be processed. The invoices that include maybe installment. It even can have the open invoices that are partially paid or partially credited. So we'll see how the Dunning configurations can be done in the system so that we can send notices to the customers for their due amounts. So these are the configuration steps on your screen. First is to create the Dunning keys, then defining the block reasons for Dunning notices, define Dunning procedures, create Dunning interval in days to Dunning procedure, Dunning, defining Dunning levels to Dunning procedure, then defining Dunning charges to Dunning procedure, minimum amount to the Dunning procedure, assigning the Dunning text and the forms to Dunning procedures, define Dunning levels to Dunning procedure and assign special indicator to Dunning procedures. Once we are done with the configuration steps, we will then move to the unit testing where we will execute the whole process and we'll see how those Dunning notices are generated through the SAP system. 
So now moving on to the configuration steps one by one and we'll discuss what they are all about and how they are used in the SAP system. So moving to the Dunning key. Dunning keys limit the Dunning level of an item. An item means open items or open invoices. Dunning keys are used to mark items that should not trigger a higher Dunning level. The user specifies the Dunning key identification and maximum level that can be triggered. So you need to create a Dunning key for generating the Dunning notices. So we'll move to this SAP screen where we will be defining the Dunning keys as per the path provided to you over here on the screen. So we'll go to account financial accounting new then to account receivable and accounts payable. In that we need to go to business transaction then Dunning. So let's move to the SAP screen SPRO. We'll click on to the SAP reference IMG. Here we need to go to financial accounting new. Then we need to go account receivable. And in account receivable, as you can see, we need to go to the business transaction. In that, you need to go to the Dunning. And in Dunning, we will move to the basic settings. Over here you can see the defined Dunning keys. So the path is simple. You need to go to the financial accounting new, then account receivable and accounts payable. From there the business transactions, then Dunning, then basic settings for Dunning and then defining Dunning keys. Now we will be executing this Dunning key option over here. Now in this what we will do is we can create our own Dunning key on the screen. So what we will be doing is you can even create with new entries or you can copy one. So what we will be doing is we will be creating while copying one. So we will be copy this Dunning key over here. So I selected this payment has been made separate item display. I will select this and then I will move over here to this copy. And now I can name this key whatever name I want to give for my company's Dunning key. Suppose I give it as I cannot give more than one character. So I need to give one particular one character to it. So suppose I give it as I and I can click on to the enter. So it will get copied. So you can see now the I has been copied over here. Even it's a simple, there is nothing much in it. Even if you wanted, you can, I just copied and then I created this. Even if you want, you can go and you can create this with the new entries as well. Suppose I delete it from over here. So now I go and I, I want to create it with the new entries. So you can even go to the new entries now. And you can create with the new entries over here as well. So what I defined over here is I. You need to click onto the print separately. And now over here you can give the description for your Dunning key. So even if I want I can give it to Dunning for company code 1200. So what I did is I created my new Dunning key where I defined the Dunning text over here as Dunning for company code 1200. I need to select one. I have to give a Dunning key that could be of one character. It cannot have more than one character. And I need to select the print separately box over here. So once I had did this, now I can go and I can save this over here. So I need to take some another key instead of I because I, I have copied and created one and then I delete it. So the system is not allowing me create with the same uh, Dunning key that is I. So I will be taking it as suppose as Y and now I will move to save this. So click on to the enter. 
now you can move and you can save the screen and you can save this configuration in this request so you can see now the, the that the Y has been created over here similarly you can create for yourself while going to this new entry and you can create your own Dunning key so this Dunning key is important for sending the Dunning notices to the customer so moving to the next configuration step now that is Dunning block so Dunning block reasons are used to block a customer item from sending the notices to the customer as you can see on the diagram the a customer master is linked to the line items so what we do is we create a customer master and then on the customer master we do the transaction posting and the invoices are posted so the customer master and the line items are linked to each other and once we define the Dunning block reason in the customer master then that particular line item is not taken for the Dunning because that has been restricted or blocked from sending the notices to the customer so there are two options of putting the Dunning block either you can assign the Dunning in the customer master or even you can assign that the Dunning block in the particular line item that is the open invoices as well if you want to block from sending the notices to the customer for certain number of open items then in that case we go and we assign the block Dunning block in that particular open items or the documents but if we want that the whole as a whole that particular customer should not be sent any notices for any of the invoices in that case we need to assign the Dunning block in the customer master itself so you can prevent the customer invoice from Dunning there are two way outs as we discussed you can enter a Dunning block in an in the item that is the customer invoice customer invoice document then the system puts this item on the blocked items list and this item is not included in the Dunning notice the another one is you can enter the Dunning block in the customer master in that case the system does not issue Dunning notice for that particular customer so how you can create Dunning block reasons because to block these customers or the line items you should have the Dunning reasons with you so to create that Dunning block reasons you need to go to the transaction the path over here as on the screen that is account receivable and accounts payable then business transaction Dunning business setting and then Dunning block reasons so we can move to that path we need to go to the financial accounting new account receivable and accounts payable then business transaction then Dunning then basic settings for Dunning now in this you can see that there is a Dunning block reason is there this is where we define our Dunning block reasons and on the basis of the reasons you can block the line item or the customer from sending the notices to the customer so we execute this over here now in this if you want to define the Dunning reason you need to double click on this so you can see there are already certain number of Dunning reasons are defined and these are by standard SAP system by default these reasons have been provided over here and in case you want any more Dunning reasons to be added you can add the, those Dunning reasons with the new entries transaction over here so if you go to this new entry suppose I want to put another Dunning block reason over here suppose I take uh, Z this is 
block customer and I save it. So what will happen is the system will create one more Dunning reason in the screen and now you can see that that over here one more Dunning block reason has been added that is block customer. So similarly if you have any specific reason which is not there on this particular uh, reasons then you can create your own block reason as well. So this is the Dunning reason how you can create the Dunning reasons and once you have created these Dunning reasons and you want to restrict that customer from uh, to be sent the notices you can go and you can assign this Dunning notice Dunning reason or from over here in their master or the line items so that we will check later on uh, while doing the unit testing now moving to the next step that is defining the Dunning procedure. The Dunning procedure contains the configuration of a Dunning program. The Dunning procedure are company code independent. They determine the Dunning interval, the grace period for the Dunning due date determination and the number of Dunning levels. So you can see on this screen that the Dunning procedure configuration is directly linked with the Dunning program. Dunning program is the program by which the notices are sent to the customer at the end while executing the Dunning run program. So when we configure the Dunning program in the Dunning program sorry Dunning procedure when we configure the Dunning procedure in the Dunning procedure configuration part we need to define also the Dunning levels minimum amount of notice that can be sent the Dunning charges suppose the customer is not responding even after one or two notices or he doesn't pay the bill on the due date or after the due date what kind of a charges can be put on him so those Dunning charges are also assigned to it and then the Dunning text so we'll be configuring these all sub part one by one in the system so moving to the Dunning procedure now So now moving on to the Dunning procedure, the path are there with you on the screen. So from over here we will be moving to the, so you can see now a business transaction Dunning and Dunning procedure is over here. To define the Dunning procedure you need first to expand this over here and you can see over here define Dunning procedure. So to define the Dunning procedure you need to go and equip to execute this option over here. So now what we will be doing is we first need to create our own Dunning procedure. On the system you can find number of Dunning procedure are already defined but for our own company code we need to define our own procedure. So suppose I create my own procedure over here by going to the new procedure. And over here I need to give the Dunning procedure as a name as a four digit code a maximum it can have is a four digit code so what I will be defining it as suppose I take it as 1200 that is the same code as that of my company code so I can put over here how many uh, the Dunning procedure for 1200 this will represent that this Dunning procedure representing the company code 1200 now moving to it there are number of fields over here which need to be configured or need to be filled as per the requirement so the first option that is Dunning interval in days now Dunning interval in days over here this is the time interval between the two notices so if first notice have been served so after how many days you want the second notice to be served to the customer that need to be defined over here. So suppose I take the, the number of days as to be 7. Suppose I want that there should be a break of or a, a gap of 7 days in between the two notices. The second is number of Dunning levels. So it specifies the number of notices to be served to the customer. 
So as an overhaul, how many notices we want to send? For example, if you take a normal scenario that your mobile bill has been generated and now you need to pay the bills but somehow you have not paid it till the due date so you start receiving the notice or the messages or the mails from the from the telecom company so in how many intervals you get those notices and how many notices do you receive that is over here you need to define so in normal cases we take seven days in telecom cases it is it it comes every day as a notice to you but in other scenarios it comes to you every three days four days seven days so whatever days you want to take you can take it over here suppose even you want you can take four days over here as well and the number of dunning suppose i want a maximum of four notices can be served to the to the customer so i will take four as a number of le dunning level so number of dunning level is specified as four that means it specifies the that four number of notices will be served to the customer for making the payment similarly the total due item from the dunning level this is not required the minimum days in area if you want any number of days in area to be put up over here that you can take and even if you want any any grace period to be provided to that particular customer so that he can he can pay his uh, due amount so you can provide over here number of grace periods suppose i take three days as a grace period to him and at times it happens that when the customer is has not paid the due amount in the due days then at times some companies charge interest on them as well so in case you have any interest calculation then you can define the interest indicator over here as well so you can so, uh, you can even search for the interest indicators from the search options so you can see there are number of uh, interest calculation options are there you can take that so a standard item interest calculation is there so this is what we will be taking over here 01 holiday public holiday calendar id so if you want to follow the public holiday calendar id so that you doesn't send it on a on a holiday days or even you want to give the grace to the customer for the holiday days that can be taken so you can search for the public holiday calendar id so you can find over here number of calendar ids are there so for united states you will follow your own united states calendar that is over here us public holiday calendar usa so that you can select it over here so once you do this all you need to select this standard transaction dunning so what the dunning which is will be created will be created for this standard transaction that is the the invoices which are due for the payment now moving down define reference dunning procedure for text over here if you want you can take any other dunning procedure for reference as well otherwise you can leave this as blank so i don't need this reference dunning procedure so i am putting it these as a blank so this is how you would be defining your dunning procedure first once you have defined your dunning procedure you can go and you can save this dunning procedure and now your dunning procedure is so it says reference dunning procedure has zero dunning level no problem enter for so i need to change the dunning period over here okay i will be taking it okay let it be 7 so now you can see the message has been generated dunning level data has still not been entered okay so this dunning level data is to be okay i take it as 14 so now you can see the dunning interval has not been in days okay okay so let it be 7 and now i need to go for the dunning level over here so dunning procedure has number of options over here you can see so once you have created your dunning procedure now the dunning procedure has got number of sub configurations in them now you can see on the header over here the sub configuration is dunning level dunning charges minimum amount dunning text 
special gel indicators so one by one in the dunning procedure you need to define this dunning level and the other configurations as well so the system is giving you the warning message because this dunning level in days over here has yet not been defined over here in this dunning level over on the top so first i need to go and i have to define the dunning level over here so let's move to the dunning level on the top click on to it dunning level so once i click on to the dunning level there it take you to the next screen to you so now moving on to the dunning level here i need to define the levels of dunning the maximum which we can have is a four level dunning as we defined a four level dunning in the screen so over here the number of over here the dunning and we what is the date days in error has to be taken the days in error means that the items are due for dunning from one level to the second level so if the first level is 3 the second level can be 10 so after 10 there could be the second uh, days in error so you can define these days over here it could be as per your convenience as you want uh, the dunning to be done so once you divide 3 in the first that means the dunning notice will be sent after 3 days that is dunning level 1 the second is dunning in error that is dunning level 2 then 17 is dunning level 3 and then dunning level 4 at 20 uh, after 24 days now if you want to calculate the interest as well then you need to check box tick mark this check box the interest will be calculated from the selected level of dunning so suppose the first two level i don't want interest to be charged to the customer invoices but in case the consumer or the customer doesn't make payment even after the second dunning level and then in that case if the company want to charge interest from dunning third you need to select it over here so after this from the third level of notice the interest will be charged on the amount due for the payment by the customer moving to the next over here is the print parameter where always done always done is a system issue the same notice from the from here on to the customer so it is by the system itself decided so after the fourth level we give the automated settings in the system where the system sends the notices to the customer itself and you don't have to process the dunning at all so it will be auto generated by the system print all items print all items means it will send the list of all the overdue items to the customer for which the payment has to be done so if you want you can select all of them so every time when the notice will be sent to the customer it will also send all the open items means all the invoices details to the customer as well that how many open item are pending for payment next is payment deadline so even if you want you can give the deadline to the customer as well that what is the deadline to make the payment so even if i want i can put the dunning days uh deadline over here as well so for the third dunning i am putting the deadline over here as 10 in the third dunning level in this fourth i can put 7 so in this way you can even put the dunning uh, payment deadline as well in the in the dunning level so this is how you need to create this dunning level so in this way the level as many levels as you create that much of dunning number of notices can be sent to the customer so once you have done this now we can go back and now we can now go and we can save this over here so your dunning procedure will be defined okay so yet it gives certain amount of okay now you can see you need to enter number of times because every time it ask for dunning level then the charges then the minimum amount which we define one by one in the next steps so now we can go and we can continue it or entered and then it ask you to save the configuration in the request so now you continue and the request the configuration have been saved to the request so you can see over here now that the dunning procedure has been defined 1200 over here that has been created in the system 
so now the dunning procedure has been created that is 1200 moving to the next step is to create dunning interval in days to dunning procedure now this is the same menu path or the transaction where we created the dunning procedure but within the dunning procedure there are number of options which we need to define or to configure so we'll move back to this again double click on to this dunning procedure for 1200 it will take you to the dunning procedure so you can see over here there are number of options in this so number of things we have already defined like uh, creating the dunning interval in days so over here we have already defined the dunning interval in days that is 4 this has already been defined in the system the the number of intervals in days as you can check in the screen over here this represents the dunning interval in days to the dunning procedure so in the screen moving to the next step now is dunning level to dunning procedure even the dunning levels we just defined so for defining the dunning levels this is dunning level in days now to define the dunning level you have to go over here which we have just created a while back so this is also we have covered as a dunning level configuration part on the screen over here this we have already taken up moving back now the next step of configuration is dunning charges an important point dunning charge is used to cover the postage and handling of dunning letters in this step we add the dunning charge as per the dunning level this is like an administration charge to send the notice to the customer it is an additional claims from the customer towards not paying the due amount in time the dunning charges can be fixed amount depending upon the dunning level or it can be fixed as per the percentage of the due amount as well so as you can see in the diagram the dunning level there could be a static amount which can be charged that is a fixed amount can be charged as well as per each dunning level or the second is dunning level can be charged as a percentage as well so the percentage to be applied to the total of all the overdue items in the account to determine the dunning charge so now to define the dunning charges we need to go to again the same dunning procedure path and in that we need to go and we have to you can see over here but on the top there are number of options over here so you can see over here there is a charges so you need to choose this charges click on to the charges and it will take you to the configuration part for defining the dunning charges so click on to this charges so it asks you the currency so the currency will be the same that is the local currency us dollars okay you can search it over here as well so you can see over here the dunning the currency is US dollars so that is what you have taken the currency over here that is USD continue so now it takes you to the second screen you can see over here so we define the four level of dunning so over here in the dunning level first column will be defining the dunning level one two three and four this will be the four level of dunning and as per each dunning if you have any charges as a fixed amount you can put that amount over here in respective columns or else if you want to charge as a percentage you can put the charges over here as well suppose if a customer doesn't make the payment after the first notice in that case I charge five dollars as an extra even if he doesn't make the payment even after the second notice I put it over here as five dollars and in case I, he doesn't make after the third it, it increases to ten dollars and next it increases to again the same ten dollars 
So these are the different charges I am putting up on the Dunning notice which will be charged to the customer in case it exceeds the due date or even if you want you can decide the percentage over here as well. So you have both the options to charge as a static amount or to charge as a percentage. So suppose I take it over here in the last part and I put it over here as that 5% will be charged as a Dunning charge if the invoice is not paid till the fourth Dunning level. Enter. So you can see over here the things have been updated. This is how the Dunning charges has to be fixed in the screen. Once you have defined this, you can now move and you can, uh, can go back with this option over here. So once we are back, you need to save this entry over here. So save. Okay. So you can see this warning message. Click on to enter. And now you can save, you can continue with and the request is save with it. So we have now defined the Dunning charges. Now moving to the next is define the minimum amount to the Dunning procedure. So again it is the same to define the minimum amount to the Dunning procedure. We need to go to the Dunning procedure again. We need to double click onto the Dunning procedure over here. Double click. So it takes you again to within the details of the Dunning procedure and over here you will find on the top that uh, we have already defined the Dunning level. We have defined the charges. Now we need to define the minimum amount over here. So we need to go and you can you have to click on to this minimum amount. So once you click on to the minimum amount is ask you for the currency. So you need to put your current respective country's currency for which the company code uh, has been uh, followed. Click on to the enter. So it take you to the next screen where now you need to maintain the minimum amount for the Dunning procedures. So again over here we need to put the Dunning level. The there are maximum four level of Dunning. One, two, three and four. Now over here you need to put the minimum amount or the maximum amount. So first we have given the Dunning level. The minimum amount is the amount of account should be equal or more than this amount to generate the Dunning notice for the account. For example, if a certain invoice of $10 has not been paid till date and the due date has been passed on, you want the Dunning, you want the Dunning notice to be sent to the customer? No. Even at times, the, there is a minimum amount beyond which the Dunning notice is to be generated. So you can fix the minimum amount over here. Suppose I fix the minimum amount as $100. And below $100, no notices will be generated. It will be generated only in case the payment is due beyond $100. Then we will move on to the notices, uh, sending notices to the customer. Now moving on to the second, minimum percentage. This is the percentage of the overdue item to be selected for Dunning when compared to all other open items of the account. The system will check the previous column that is the minimum amount and the percentage should be equal or more than the amount is specified in the first column. So in case we define the percentage over here as well then the percentage checks the minimum amount and if the percentage is equal to the minimum amount or more than the percentage calculated on the overall due amount then it will send the notice to the customer. So as of now, I am not putting any minimum percentage because I have defined the minimum amount. So if any, um, any invoice is due, suppose for ex uh, example, an invoice is booked for a customer for $110. In that case, the notices will be generated. The Dunning level will be generated to that particular customer. But in case the invoice due is of $95, in that case, that particular invoice will not be eligible for the notices to be sent. Now moving on to the next is the minimum amount for interest. 
in this the amount on which the system can be calculate the interest has to be fixed over here so over here you can put the minimum amount of interest as well suppose i take it over here as uh, 1 over here i take as 5 over here i take as 10 over here also i take as 10 so it's up to you what kind of a minimum amount of interest you want to charge to that customer depending upon the amount of invoices so the minimum amount of interest will be charged in case of first level is one dollar that is what the minimum interest can be charged if the interest calculated is suppose 80 cent then it will not be charged to the customer it should be charged only if it is more than one dollar and in the second earning level it will be charged only if it is beyond five dollars and in the third and the fourth it will be charged if it is again beyond ten dollars so this is how you will be defining your minimum amount in the screen and now you can enter on the screen and you will see the currency has been updated over here to you so once you have defined your dunning procedure minimum amount now we can go back with this arrow over here and we can save over here the settings enter continue so now your minimum amount to the dunning procedure has been defined now again we'll be moving to the next step that is assigning the dunning text and forms to the dunning procedures so this is also within the same dunning procedure part these are sub uh, configuration steps within the dunning procedure so again we need to go and choose the dunning procedure click choose button and then choose the dunning text button so now we'll move over here we'll double click on to the dunning procedure so once you double click on to the dunning procedure for 1200 it will take you to the configuration page and in this again moving on to the top we have already defined the dunning level we have defined the dunning charges the minimum amount has been defined now we need to define the dunning text so choose the dunning text over here click on it and once you click you can see a pop-up screen has come to you over here it asks you the company code so you need to fill the company code 1200 and you need to select the customer or the vendor for which you are processing the dunning configuration so i will be taking it up as customer and then we go to continue so click on to the continue now over here you can see again the screen and uh, over here we will be configuring this so again we will be taking the four level of dunning one two three four and over here you need to define the form the form which will be used for printing the dunning notices has to be assigned over here so to select that you need to go to the search option over here so you can see there are number of options over here if it is with interest or if it is without interest you can select that so there are number of options over here if i want the dunning should be sent is in english language so i will be taking this as a language en active the, and i have selected this over here then we can go and we can click on to continue and you can see now that that particular dunning form has been assigned over here now moving again for this few more searches we can check back the more forms in it so now again we go back and we search for with interest option over here so if your dunning notice is with interest then in that case you can go and you can select this particular option over here so similarly there are number of forms over here and as per the requirement that particular forms can be selected from the screen as per different country specific different particular programs are provided to you so what i will be taking up is the same that is this particular dunning program and the same dunning program i will be uh, dunning form i will be taking for the rest of the notice dunning level as well so this is what you will be doing you need to put the four level of dunning over here and you need to assign the particular form to that punning to that particular 
dunning level that's it you don't have to do anything else in this dunning text part now go back and again save this screen and now continue so you can see now the dunning procedure 1200 was saved now moving next dunning level to dunning procedure we have already defined and when we created the dunning procedure so now moving to the next is assigning the special indicator to dunning procedure now this particular part is an optional for uh, dunning so we can go to this particular special jewel indicator as well over here so for that again we need to double click on to the procedure that is 1200 So moving to the special jewel indicator now we need to go over here to special jewel indicator and click on it. So you will find a number of special jewel indicator are over here on the screen. Now the dunning which we are doing is for the customer so we will focus on the left side of the screen that is the customer part only and in that we can select the option over here as down payment as A. And we will also select the reserve for bad debts as well. The reserve for bad debt is selected. Suppose in certain cases, even after sending number of dunning notices and the customer doesn't make the payment, in that case, the system will consider that particular open items or the particular invoices as reserve for bad debts. Means even after four notices, uh, that particular amount will be considered probable chances of bad debts so that that much amount of reserves will be taken up for that so this is why we create this special gene indicator over here so you need to select this down payment and e e for reserve for bad debt apart from this even if you feel anything has to be taken you can take that but as a normal scenario these are the two options which are taken so that is what we will be taking up over here as a special jewel indicator so once you have selected this again we can go back and we can save this screen and continue so your dunning procedure finally has been prepared so you can see now that we are done with the configuration steps and the major configuration is dunning procedure as the dunning procedure has got number of other configurations to be done which are at the header so once we created the dunning procedure then we define first the dunning level then we define the charges then we have to define the minimum amount and then the dunning text and the special jewel indicators so once then these all are defined your configurations are done and over so now moving on now let's discuss the dunning process this is something which we have already discussed till the configuration as well but with the help of the diagram we'll be revisiting it once again so normally what happens this customer master record contains your dunning procedure over here as you can see and even i can show you on the customer master so suppose open up a customer fd02 so suppose take the company code 1200 and select a customer so this is the customer you have selected continue So now, so now once we have entered the customer master, you need to go to the company code data and the company code data you need to go to the correspondence and in correspondence you can see the details related to dunning data. In that you can find there is a dunning block option over here over here you can select the indicator for block and once you select the indicator in the customer master no notices will be sent for this particular customer for any of the invoices due 
Dunning procedure over here you need to select the Dunning procedure so as per the diagram this is where you select the Dunning procedure over here you need to select the Dunning procedure over here so as per the diagram you you define the Dunning details in the custom master record and then when we process the open items the Dunning program is executed depending upon the Dunning procedure defined in the customer master. So in case you don't define any Dunning procedure in uh, any of the customer master, automatically that particular customer master will not be eligible for the Dunning notices to be sent to the customer because the system will not be ident able to identify the open items for that particular customer because the Dunning procedure has not been assigned to it. So you need to assign the Dunning procedure in the customer master and then whenever you process the open items the system will automatically calculate as per the Dunning program. So this Dunning program we will be doing in the unit testing part and after the Dunning program was executed the system print the document or the notices and you can send those things with the courier to the customer or even there is a functionality of sending these things as a soft copy to the customer's mail ID as well. So both the options are available with the with the company whichever process they want to follow with. Now moving to the unit testing we are done with all the configuration steps we'll do the unit testing over here for the Dunning procedure and we'll, we'll execute the Dunning program and we'll see how the Dunning notices are sent to the customers. So now we'll move to the unit testing. The first part is to maintain the Dunning procedure into the customer master account. So we'll move over here. This is the customer master. Let's execute it again. FD02 enter. So you have to select the customer then you have to select the company code and then you have to continue. So once you continue you need to go to the company code data So once you execute the customer master, the first screen which comes to you is the general data and the Dunning informations are always saved with the company code data. So you need to go to this company code data over here and the company code data you need to go to the correspondence and in the correspondence you have to define the Dunning procedure over here. So you need to select the Dunning procedure with the selection options over here. So these are the list of Dunning procedure you can see over here. So I will be defining the Dunning procedure 1200 for the this particular customer over here. So I have defined it. So once you have defined the Dunning procedure, now you can save the screen and the Dunning procedure will be assigned to the customer master data. So you can see the changes have been made. Now moving to the next unit testing step is to post customer invoices. So now we'll be posting some of the customer invoices in the customer for the customer FB70 enter. So now select the customer over here. So I have selected the customer double click invoice date. So I need to take the invoice date of prior back date so that I will be able to uh, generate a due invoices and can execute the payment program sorry the Dunning program. So let's take the date over here as 17 7 10 to 40 enter enter again enter now you need to put the reference number over here that is the invoice number then you can take over here the amount suppose the amount over here is of two thousand dollars and now we will select over here the GL for crediting the amount so two thousand dollars the GL which I have taken is of sales account. So once I have taken these things now I can go and I can simulate the entry. So before simulating I need the business area to be selected as well. 
so once I have done this I will simulate this particular document so you can see over here so now you can see the preview of the document now save the document over here so what I did is I posted the customer invoice as well the document number is generated over here as well so once I, did, I have posted the customer invoice now I will go back to the customer ledger and will check the customer ledger balance for the open due open items so FBL 5N enter so you can execute this and you can see over here the number of due items are these many so you must have to ensure that the customer balance should be debit balance so that the there will be number of due balance due invoices uh, which are due for payment so you can see over here the net due date is below as mentioned to you so there are a couple of documents over there which have got the the due date have been passed so they are due for the payment now so now we'll go to the next step that is the dunning run dunning run means executing the dunning program so that the notices can be sent to this particular customer so similarly number of customers are there in a particular company and the same procedure is followed for them as well so for all the customers to whom you want to send the dunning you need to assign the dunning procedure in their customer master and then you need to process the dunning program so once you process the dunning program that particular dunning program can be processed for all the customers in one go so you don't have to do the manual activities again and again to send one to one notices to the customer so this saves a lot of time efforts for the company and at the same time for the employer or the user as well so now we'll be moving to the last step of unit testing that is done so now we'll be executing the dunning run the transaction code is f150 as you can see on the screen moving on over here SAP system f150 enter so you can see the screen over here where in this you find that the run date identification and status it looks very like uh, f110 but it's different that was automatic payment run and it is the automatic dunning run so in this to execute the dunning run we need to take the run on date so this run on date is used to identify the date the parameter usually we enter here the date when you run the dunning program however a program run at an earlier or a later date is also possible so now we'll be putting the run date suppose I want to run uh, normally the running dunning uh, run is done at the end of the month so that is why we will be taking a month end date so the month end date is 3011204 now you need to have an identification over here as well so this identification is just to ident to identify that which particular done has been done on that particular day so suppose I take the running identification over here as test so this dunning run which is also known as the dunning program allows you to generate dunning notices for many customers at one transaction run if you want to generate the single dunning letter even that can be done for that well so now we need to maintain the parameters on the basis of which this dunning run or the dunning program will be executed so for maintaining the parameter we need to go to the tab over here that is the parameter so now over here you need to give the dunning date dunning date is the date on which you will be executing the uh, the dunning program so the dunning date has got two functions first it is the issue date of the dunning notice on this date the dunning notice will be issued to the customer it is also the also the basis for calculating the days in error 
so we can put the date over here as the month in that that is 30th of November and now you need to take the documents posted up to so the document posted up to basically means that only items which has been posted up to this date are included in this processing so whatever the document or the open items available till 30th 11 will be taken for this particular process so beyond that anything will not be considered so any document which has been posted in the month of December will not be eligible for the Dunning run for this particular part for this particular Dunning run next is you need to select the company code for which you will be executing the Dunning run now you need to select the customer for which you will be executing the Dunning so the customer if you want you can have one particular customer also can be taken and you can have the all customers at in one go it is up to the convenience of the company that how they want to process this so we'll be selecting over here the customer for which I will be executing I will be taking only one customer over here then in the vendor if you want to go for the dunning for the vendor as well you can con select the vendor as well so right now we are not executing it as dunning is not used for the vendors in a practical scenarios so we will not be going to take the uh, the vendor over here the next is now the next tab over here is free selection usually you don't need to enter any data in this particular tab however this function allows you to enter additional criteria for generating the Dunning notices example you can select only the customers for which there has been defined a certain accounting clerk data in customer master records so normally we don't use this so we can skip this free selection over here now moving to the next is additional log tab now in the additional log tab we need to define the customer for which we will be executing the dunning so over here we'll be selecting the customer that is it for which we will be will be going to execute the dunning program so once we have filled the parameters over here now we can go on click the save button so as to update the running run, dunning run so once i have execute uh, saved you can see on the footnote the details have been saved for the dunning on 3011214 as a test so once this has been done now we can go to the status over here and you can see that the parameter were maintained earlier when we executed the transaction the parameters there was no parameter but now the parameter has been saved on the screen so once we have got the parameter in place now we can go and we can schedule this particular notice uh, dunning program or the dunning notice to be sent so over here you can go to the schedule over here <coughs> and you can click on to the schedule it decides when do you want the generation process to begin so when you click on to the schedule over here it asks you the output device so in normal cases the output device which we take let's search the output device over here the output device normally we take is LP01 this is the by default standard SAP device so we'll take this LP01 over here continue so as you clicked on to the continue it take you to the next screen here it asks you the start date so the start date will also be the same date that is 30-11-2014 now I want to start the Dunning procedure immediately so I will select this start immediately option if you want to delay the Dunning run you want to postpone or you want to schedule at some other time or other date even you can schedule this Dunning run over there as well but I will be executing at this particular process so once you clicked on once I took the start immediately option I will move to the schedule over here so you can click over here this will execute your schedule now so once I click over here you can see the options in the status bar has changed now the Dunning selection schedule for 7 12 14 at this much so at this date actual date I am executing the Dunning run till 30th November 2012 so once this Dunning is executed now you can see over here the Dunning selection running so it is still in the running mode so now we can go and we can refresh this so that 
we can see that dunning has been completed so you need to go over here at this enter that is a refresh page over here so once I click on to this refresh over here again it will update the status of dunning selection this running should convert to complete then only your dunning will be over it will be processed so you need to execute the dunning run similarly in this way and once you execute this running will complete will come to status as complete and once the dunning is completed your dunning program is over and done and you can take the print of the dunning with the uh, transaction sp01 and you can print the document and can be sent to the customers so since this is how you need will you need to take the dunning so suppose this gets completed how you will be going to check you need to go to the system and over here you need to go to this over here as a part okay so you need to go over here to check your particular spool or there is a particular transaction over here slash OSP01 uh, 2 as well enter so over here you will find your spool will be created and with that spool you can take the print of that particular screen so this is the output control where your spool will be generated and then you can select that spool and you can take the print of that spool over here so you can see this uh, displays you some of the information related to dunning and there will be a particular print which can be taken up and that will complete your dunning process so this is how you will be doing your dunning part that is it in dunning We'll see you with the new topic in the next training session. Thank you.